what do you say? What do you know, stupids? Welcome to the Bugcast episode seven. We are back. It has been a while here. Um, I was sick last week, so didn't get much out in regards to um, posting and uploading on Twitter. So I am back. I am ready to go. Welcome to episode seven. We are going to be talking strictly college football. So this episode will be strictly college football. And then Wednesday night, we will talk NFL. So let's just go jump right into it. We'll go over some scores that happened last week, and we'll um, get right back into it. So Georgia rolled Kentucky, 51-13. Um, Bowers, seven receptions, 132 yards and a touchdown. Um, and Beck had 389, four touchdowns and interception. First game, Georgia's looked good from, like, start to finish. They blew them out in, like, the first half. So Georgia looked good. Actually, like, a number one going for a three-time, three-peat national championship. They looked good. So we'll see how that continues. Michigan rolled Minnesota 52-10. Michigan's defense had two pick sixes. Again, it blew Minnesota out of the first half. Looked good the entire game. That was the real time. Michigan has looked good since they've played anybody. So we'll see how the one and two of the nation look and fare next week and the coming weeks. But both of them, both of those teams look like they are the ones that are here. So we'll see how that goes. Ohio State started slow against Maryland in the first half and then rolled in the second, out, out beat them 37-17. They outscored them 27 to 7 in the first half. Second half, excuse me. Um, Ohio State was horrible on third down conversions. They need to get that fixed against big games. In two weeks, they play Penn State at home. That's going to be a top five matchup, so they need to figure that out. Um, fixed penalties. They had 10 for 81 yards. They got to get crisp. They got to get cleaner. Maryland hung around because of those two factors. They got to figure that out and get that done before they play Penn State. Because when they play Penn State, Penn State's going to be looking to take them down at home in Columbus. McCord looked good, 320 yards and two touchdowns, and Harrison Jr. had eight receptions, 163 yards and a touchdown. So the offense looked good. Defense needs to figure some things out. You know, they held – I mean, defense held Maryland away for the first first part of the game, and then the second part they just – the offense took over and the defense didn't really need to do much, so they looked good. FSU beat Virginia Tech, 39-17. Um, FSU looked human in this game. Uh, they really did. They didn't look like the dominating force that people are so accumulated to seeing. Um, Travis looked human. He had 170 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, running back Benson had 11 carries, 200 yards, and two touchdowns. And then Wilson had four receptions, 54 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, they had 452 yards of total offense, but didn't look good. Um, was average subpar. They like kind of just coasted through that game. So we'll see how FSU looks. Um, USC survived Arizona three overtimes. That game was... It was a later game. Um, I had no idea it was that close. Um, I figured Arizona was going to get blown out of the water. But USC survived. Uh, USC missed a 25-yard field goal right at the buzzer. So probably shouldn't have gone in three overtimes, but it did. Um, and USC made their t- the two-point in the third overtime. Um, each team made one in the second overtime. Or I'm sorry. Um, U- Arizona missed theirs, and then USC got theirs. So... You Arizona had 35 minutes of time of possession, which is crazy. Um, USC's defense looked horrible, gave up um, a lot of yards. Both teams did. Both teams gave up a stupid amount of yards. There was no defense. It was just an offensive shootout. Um, 200 yards of total penalties combined for both teams, which is terrible. Arizona's Fafita had 303 yards, five touchdowns, and interception. Uh, Caleb Williams had 219 and a touchdown. He looked human. USC's defense looked like they were getting tore apart. So we'll kind of see where USC stands after that. Didn't look good. Um, USC's got a lot to fix. They have Notre Dame next week. Um, Notre Dame's on the rebound, rebuild. But USC did not look like USC. Caleb Williams looked subpar. And there are some teams, if they keep playing, if they play like this against some teams in the Pac-12, it could go real ugly real quick for USC. So USC's definitely got some stuff to fix. Um, I think the best game of the day, the weekend, I should say, uh, the Red River rivalry uh, was insane. That game from start to finish, I missed most of it, but from what I saw highlight-wise, it was an unreal game. Dylan Gabriel, if you don't know his name, get to know his name, look his statistics up for OU. He carried that team to win. He doesn't do what he does offensively, running the ball and throwing the ball. They lose that game. He was 23 for 38 for 285 yards and a touchdown. So you would think, okay, that, that's going to do enough to get a win in the Red River rivalry. Yeah, but when you have 14 carries, 113 yards, and a touchdown, that right there is going to be the reason why. Um, Oklahoma not only had great offensive possessions, but Oklahoma had a huge goal line stand. 
stop Texas four times at the one. That is insane. Four times to keep the lead and keep Texas out. OU went to win the game after Texas kicked a field goal with about a minute 17 left. OU went 75 yards in a minute and 10 seconds with zero timeouts to get the game-winning touchdown. Um, So just Oklahoma's for real. That team had had so many ups and downs. You know, they kick Texas kicks that field goal with that much time left. You're just packing your bags. OU got on their horse, their boomer sooner, and they rode that wagon and they got down and they had a and that that drive was immaculate just to go down and do that and uh, knock off a top five team like Texas. And now they may meet again in the Big 12 championship here at the end of the year. And that might be a thriller. That might be a playing game for the uh, college football playoff. Um, both offenses went off. Texas had three turnovers, which was a game changer. Three turnovers is, is crazy. There was a block punt touchdown. Energy was great. Would have loved to see that game on TV. Um, but Texas, you know, those three turnovers, a couple fumbles, or uh, I believe it was two interceptions and a fumble. Either way, those three turnovers in Oklahoma had zero. So turnovers are the story of the game. Um, Texas probably should have won that game, but OU told them that, they, hey, we're the better team. So um, keep an eye out for OU. Um, people were like, OU hasn't played anybody, OU hasn't done anything. Well, now, now, we're, now everyone's talking about OU. The second best play of the game, and I think this might even trump some, was Louisville outplays Notre Dame at home. Louisville had all the vibe they had. Um, they had um, just the vibe was insane in Louisville as, as a basketball state. That school brought it for the football team. Jack Harlow was there. The Cavaliers point guard, Donovan Mitchell, was there. It was a crazy game. Uh, forced the Louisville defense made Sam Hartman throw three interceptions. The previous game before that, he had zero. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Coming in, he had one. He had one against Duke. Three, so now he's a total of four, which is nuts. Louisville's defense made it harder on him. Jawar Jordan carried Louisville's offense with 143 yards and two touchdowns. One was to put the game away. That dude ran the ball like it was a clinic. Look at those highlights. Watch this dude run the ball. He is hitting the holes and just diverting and just untouched to the end zone. Both of his touchdowns were game changers. The first one was to take the lead. And the second one was put the game out of reach. Now, Notre Dame, I think, had a touchdown to make it a little bit closer. But that game was out of reach after those two scores. Um, Louisville outscored Notre Dame 26-13 in the second half. The game was tied 7-7 at half. And Notre Dame just did, forgot how to play football. And Louisville put it on them. Uh, Notre Dame had no rushing game. Would, had relied way too much on Hartman to throw the ball. Had 44 yards of rushing yards. Offense couldn't get going. Drives were slow. Um, up and down, wasn't consistent, five turnovers. You're not going to win a game like that. And truthfully, the score may not have shown how bad Louisville beat them, but the, the statistics will show that Louisville just absolutely dropped the hammer. And Louisville had the biggest jump in the AP Top 25, which I'll go over here in a, in a little later. But um, Louisville in the ACC, you could see them playing in Carolina for the ACC championship game, which is great. So Bama outlasted Texas A&M 26-20, a very good game again. Uh, Jalen Milrow looked good. Looked started to look like a comfortable quarterback. 21 out of 33 for 321 yards, three tutties, and one interception. Bama had no rushing game, but for no rushing game and relied heavily on the quarterback, he looked good. He looked happy. He looked consistent. He looked like he was going to bring what he's going to bring on a daily basis, weekly basis, so it looked good. Bama had 321 receiving yards, threw the ball all over A&M. Jermaine Burton had nine receptions, 197 yards, two touchdowns. So the dynamic duo for Bama came in, got it done on the road against um, A&M. Bama outscored A&M 16-3 in the second half. Texas A&M was up 17-10 at half. Texas A&M looked like they were outplaying Bama, looked like they were going to beat Bama. And A&M just let Bama hang around, and A&M didn't, con- didn't, um, didn't handle the opportunities they had. They squandered opportunities, didn't have enough big plays, played sluggish in the second half. And Bama's still 3-0 in the SEC, so we'll see how that goes. The SEC is still up for grabs. Georgia looks dominant, so we'll see how that goes. But Alabama's still in it. That one loss to Texas. Now that Texas has lost to Oklahoma, we'll kind of see how that loss is viewed. But Bama's still in it. Bama's not going away. Bama's still in the thing, so we'll see how Bama goes. UCLA outlasts Washington State. Upset, 25-17. Washington State was full offensive with solar struggles, hence the 17 points. 11 total first downs in a game is horrible. And they were 2-13 and 13 on third down. And they had four turnovers. And they had 200 yards total offense. 
those four statistics, five statistics, are going to show that why a team loses and can't get started and only scores 17 points. In the Pac-12 against a team like UCLA with a high-powered offense and a, a defense to keep them in the game, you do all those mistakes yourself, self, self-inflicting wounds, that's what's going to happen. So Washington State gave themselves – didn't give themselves a good opportunity to win that football game with those mental mistakes. 21 minutes of football time for possession. UCLA had 38. UCLA – had 470 yards total offense. So UCLA popping offense goes off. Carson Steele, 30 carries for 140 yards. And Washington State can't do anything. They're not going to be able to, they, they won't be able to catch up and nonetheless stay average with UCLA. So Washington's defense was, was asked to do too much. And then the offense either didn't get it done or shot themselves in the foot with all the stuff they had. So UCLA just, uh, overpowered Washington State's defense and Washington State's offense couldn't get it going. So UNC rolled Syracuse 47. Drake May looked fantastic. 442 yards, three touchdowns. UNC is a great team in the ACC. The ACC preseason, you didn't think you'd had a lot of teams popping up, making big noise, and you've got a couple. You've got Louisville. You've got UNC. You, you've you got teams in this that are newcomers in the ACC that you may not have had previous years. You don't even talk about Clemson being unranked. And now you've got different teams in the ACC that we may not even know what's going to happen or who we see. So keep an eye out for the ACC. ACC and Pac-12. Those two conferences are must-watch. Obviously, the SEC is always going to be must-watch, and so is the Big Ten, kind of. Not really Big Ten. It's probably the last out of those conferences. But Pac-12 and ACC are my favorite games to watch. I think I've watched more primetime ACC games than I've watched primetime SEC games just because of the energy and how close those games are. Oregon State outlast Cal 52-20 in a shootout. DJ, I'm going to pronounce your mispronounce your last name. I apologize. UI Galea had 275 yards and five tutties. He went off. Both teams had almost 500 yards of total offense. OS, OS, Oregon State had 499 and Cal had 448. No, de- um, no defense. Both teams combined for 92 points. Oregon State was 5 for 5 on 4th down, which is part of the big reason why they won that game. It was a great game, back and forth, Pac-12, no defense. No one in the Pac-12 has defense. Every time I read a score, it's 45 to 43. Um, Even the best team, USC, quote-unquote, Oregon, you know, where's their defense? We'll see when Oregon goes to Washington and plays Washington. We'll see where that kind of score is. Is it 92 points in total combined? But Oregon State outlasted Cal. Old Miss survived against Arkansas. Another good SEC game, just like the Texas A&M-Alabama game. It was close. It was a one-possession game. Offensive struggle. Both teams combined 11 for 30 on third down, so neither one of those teams can get going. Struggled to get any offensive plays, big plays. Old Miss offense didn't get enough to get it done. I'm sorry. Old, Old Miss offense did just enough. They did more than Arkansas. Arkansas also shot itself in the foot. A uh, couple turnovers. Um, Turnovers like that in the SEC are going to come back to haunt you. Old Miss forced two of them. Jay Dart was 16 for 25 for 153 yards and a touchdown. Uh, v. Ventley had 13 carries, 94 yards and a touchdown. Kind of not much talk about that game. It was kind of a very slow, steady game. 27 to 20. Um, Old Miss did just enough. Arkansas, you know, these teams are starting off slow, not getting started, and then the other team is getting started just enough and get to a point where they can kind of be a rock down a hill and roll and the other team's playing catch-up, and by the time that game, they get caught up, the game's already over. Um, this this is, next thing I'm going to talk about, probably does not do enough justice. The Miami Hurricanes football team, not only are your fans obnoxious, your energy's obnoxious, those black jerseys were nice, but still obnoxious. You guys play Georgia Tech, and you've had their number for a very long time in the ACC, and you do this bonkers debauchery cheek sponge trash of the week times four you have a kneel down in the final seconds to win the game and you run a play and you fumble the ball that's not what gets me okay stupidity hurt the you fine what gets me is you guys allow georgia tech on that mediocre offense to go 40 ish yards and score two plays later and the wide receivers untouched and you lose the game. I wrote, literally wrote, I have no words and I've probably given more words than I should have, but absolutely mind boggling. Miami, you guys are going to be the cheek sponge trash now. You're going to be the cheek sponge trash tomorrow 
And until I feel like otherwise, you're going to be the cheek sponge trash for a very long time. Should not have lost that game. But to be honest, Georgia Tech was out playing y'all the entire game. And you guys held them, let them hang around. So, I just, I don't know. I think I'm kind of done talking about it. Like, I'll end it there. Cheek sponge trash. A little quick update. Cheek sponge trash Miami. Figure y'all stuff out. That was a lot of more words. I, I guess I found more words than I needed. LSU hung on to beat Missouri in a shootout. Um, another classic SEC shootout. Jaden Daniels, if we're not, if Jaden Daniels isn't on LSU, we're not talking about LSU because LSU is absolutely horrible. Jaden Daniels keeps that team in the game and lets their defense do just enough and lets them be very mediocre and they still get it done. He had 259 yards and three touchdowns and Logan Diggs had 24 carries, 134 yards and a touchdown. LSU's defense gave up 411 passing yards. Their defense is horrible. Jaden Daniels has bailed them out multiple games. Their record and their ranking speaks for themselves, speaks for itself. Jaden Daniels isn't on this team. This team is even worse. Both teams struggled with penalties. Mizzou had two interceptions with a big swing in the game. LSU outscored Mizzou 32-14 in the second half. Mizzou led this game 25-17. This is like the third game where teams have led at the half and absolutely completely turned their game around in the second half or not done enough to finish the game, or their defense lets the team hang around just long enough to where at this point it just turns into what this is. And this has been like this for the last couple games for um, the SEC. Alabama, Texas a and Arkansas, Old Miss, and LSU, Mizzou. All three of those games, the teams that lost were leading at half. So, you know, they're not either, their offense isn't either there's not enough firepower to finally put that final nail in the coffin in the second half or they're taking their gas off their foot off the gas pedal um but team it's just it was just you know and last but not least wyoming outlast fresno state 24 19 ends fresno state's 14 uh game win streak um wyoming's andrew peasley had 183 yards three touchdowns fresno state had 38 yards rushing not gonna get it done and wyoming had 130 so wyoming ran over wearing all over fresno state Fresno State went down early 24-7 and couldn't get out of the hole, outscoring Wyoming 12-0 in the second half, and they still lost. So, again, we just talked about this team starting hot, steams going in the second half cold, and then it can just please backfires. So, um, I'm excited to see where Wyoming is now. They'll, I believe they should be ranked. The rankings will come out, and I'm pretty sure Wyoming is ranked now. So, that was kind of week five. Week five was a little helter-skelter. Um, these week six games I'm going to talk about don't have necessarily the most strongest um, outcomes as what they used to be prior to games. Like Notre Dame USC is probably not going to be just as hyped because Notre Dame now has two losses. But we're going to go ahead and get into some. Arkansas travels to Bama. Arkansas looked good last week against Ole Miss. We'll kind of see what that looks like. Maybe that game's closer than what it anticipates. I think Bama rolls them. Best game of the week, number eight, Oregon at number seven, Washington, 330. Game of the week, watch that game. That game is going to have a lot of answers for the Pac-12, not only for the Pac-12, but playoffs. That game is going to have a lot of answers. I still believe the loser of that game can still have a chance to get in. I love that game. I cannot wait to watch that game entirely and talk about it next Sunday night. Texas A&M goes to 19, Tennessee. Good game. Texas A&M is looking good. Tennessee, you know, they're not high. They're not low. They're kind of right in the middle. We'll see how that game goes. Auburn goes to at uh, number 22, LSU. LSU has been letting teams hang around, offensive powers, and Auburn only lost the seven to Georgia. So we'll kind of see if Auburn can play upset City in the Bayou. We'll keep an eye out for that. Number 10, USC at, at number 21, Notre Dame. Still going to be a great game. I think there's going to be still a lot of energy. It's a classic rivalry. Both teams are still where they need to be. USC is looking to rebound after a mid-performance against Arizona, and Notre Dame is looking to avoid a third loss. Notre Dame's third loss would be an absolute catastrophic loss of this season after predicting them going potentially into the playoffs, and now they're talking about three losses. So we'll see how that goes. Number 18, UCLA at 15, Oregon State. That is going to be a great Pac-12 matchup. Both those teams um, have moved up the rankings slowly but surely. NC State at number 17, Duke, a nice ACC rivalry. Duke is still trying to get its name on the on the board after a loss to Notre Dame. It looks good. You, NC State's a good team to get a good win against. We'll see how that goes. Number 25, Miami. At number 12, UNC. UNC, please handle your business. Do not let Miami get anywhere close to this game. Handle your business and put Miami officially away. Put put them away. They don't need to do anything after all of that. So 
those are some of the games, some trap games this week. Um, my Ohio State Buckeyes at Purdue. They always play as tough. That's gonna be a, that could be a possibly a trap game. Number twenty three, Kansas, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's playing good. They're not ranked. Kansas is just freshly ranked. That could be a good game. And Missouri at number twenty four, Kentucky. Missouri just played well last week. They looked really good. Kentucky got annihilated by Georgia. We'll kind of see what Kentucky is looking like. Are they going to beat the teams they're supposed to beat and lose to who they're supposed to lose to? So we'll kind of see how those go. I'm going to quickly run through the top 10. This episode is going to be strictly college football. It's going to be a little shorter of an episode, but we'll go ahead and go through it. Top 10, we got number one, Georgia. Number two, Michigan. Three, Ohio State. Four, FSU. Five, Oklahoma. Six, Penn State. Seven, Washington. Eight, Oregon. Nine, Texas. 10 USC. So not much of a shakeup. We will get a shakeup because we've got Penn State, Ohio State in two weeks, and we've got Washington, Oregon. So we got a top 10 matchup, and 10 USC plays Notre Dame. So we've got some shop up. Um, the rankings will have some 25 rank, top 25 ranking movement. Um, number five, Oklahoma moved up seven positions. Number 14, Louisville, biggest jump went up 11. Number 21, Notre Dame went down 11, the biggest drop. Number 25, Miami, down eight. Should have been down a lot more. They're lucky to be ranked. I don't even know why they're ranked. They should be 26, one out of being ranked. Number nine, Texas is down six. I don't think Texas is done. Got one loss, and they beat Bama, so they're still in it. They got to straighten the ship, not to worry too much. UCLA ranked um, 18 from unranked, so that went, that's one team that went from unranked to ranked. So... That's kind of the situation we got with um, week five, and we've got some week six stuff to preview. Um, thank you for the likes and the follow. Follow us on Instagram at Bubcast Official, Twitter at the Bubcast underscore, TikTok at the Bubcast, which I'm posting heavily now and getting good feedback. And give us a follow on YouTube at the Bubcast. Um, I know it's a lot of sports talks. Once I kind of get a different setup and have more people and more guests, we're going to talk about generic conversation and just have some conversation, some laughter. I like making people laugh, so kind of just get some laughter going and kind of get going from there. So I appreciate y'all liking and subscribing. Keep following us. I know these videos are kind of plain and dry. They're mostly sports. Um, but thank you. What do you say? What do you know, stupids? Have a great start of the week. And we'll see y'all Wednesday night. All right, take care.